Welcome back to FMGP. My name is Mark, and today is a day I've been waiting for for about three months. Uh, the Northwest Fab Eco Box Doubler has arrived. Let's take a look at what they sent me. Alright, full disclosure, I could not wait to open this thing. I wanted to see it. I love shiny parts. I love billet aluminum that's kind of all, um, you know, machined out and everything. And everything looks amazing. It's got the, you know, Ford EcoBox 205, made in Canada by Northwest Fab. It's got the, uh, the input shaft and all that other good stuff. And then what we're going to do, let's take it apart. So the first thing in the instructions is they want us to press the ring gear into this smooth housing here. It's, it's not the one that's got all of this kind of, you know, weird cutouts. It's a nice smooth round ID housing. And what we're going to do is take our 241, or in my case, the 241 ring gear donor, and I'm going to press this in. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of use science to my advantage. I'm going to heat this up to about 180 degrees in the oven, probably for about 15, 20 minutes or so. Get it nice and toasty. Not extremely hot i'm not trying to i'm not trying to to weaken this thing i just wanted to expand a little bit and what i've done is uh, i took my ring gear i put that in the freezer it's been in there for about three days so it's going to be nice and cold and i just want the housing you know this thing right here to be you know expand and i want that ring gear to contract and then i'm going to hopefully get by with my it says 12 ton but it's really a 20 ton press and press it together now northwest fab does suggest a 20 to 30 ton press to do this i'm gonna try to cheat and use science to my advantage so let me throw this in the oven and i'll be right back this little ring has to be um down so i'm really racing against time let me throw it on time lapse and i'll be catch up in a second than I was expecting. Um, I was hoping it would go in a little bit easier and honestly I don't know if uh, if uh, heating up and uh, cooling off uh, the stuff actually helped but it is what it is. Um, I had to modify like a I had to do basically I had to make a press block because um, I don't have a six and three eighths I think it's six and three eighths uh, circumference um, piece of tube or something that I used to press it in so I kind of had to walk it in little by little but everything looks okay what i would suggest doing is if once you get it seated and you think you got to see it all the way stick your head in it's kind of hard to see but if you look through the hole spin it all the way around you want to make sure that this ridge and the gear are touching and we should be good to go so i tested out the planetary inside the ring gear that we just pressed in everything feels good now I'm gonna take, clean off the input bearing, maybe shoot it with a little bit of ATF, or um, yeah, ATF, just to keep it greasy, and um, make sure there's no uh, sediment in there, and we'll put this in. Got a little ATF on there. I'm gonna take a brass hammer, tap this in. Perfect, good. I just cleaned up the planetary, gave it a little bit of ATF, nothing too crazy. I didn't, I, not a bath, just a little, little misting. Boom. There we go, nice and smooth. Okay, now we're gonna put on the retaining snap ring. Just gonna find my uh, flat nose. Snap ring pliers here. Oops. Right. 
Okay. There we go. And this is why I tell you to keep all your parts. Uh, I forgot to keep that part and I had to go into my bin where I kind of knew I threw it and dig it out. So uh, lesson learned, keep your parts. All right, and uh, normally in this part, we'd be taking our front bearing retainer and um, making sure the seal is good. I just found out mine is not, it's actually dry rotted. So I'm gonna have to drive this out, order up a new seal, and we can continue with the video momentarily. All right, so I was able to run down to the parts store and get a new seal. I'm just gonna drive this out so we can uh, move along. All right, so we finally got everything cleaned off. This is all blown off and wiped down. I got my new fresh seal. I'm gonna lube up the seal so I don't dry install it. And then this uh, retainer can only go on one way. So I'm gonna take some uh, Ultra Black, skim coat on here, line it up, and then uh, we're gonna tighten these bolts down. All right, so we're just gonna lube up the seal. So let's find, I bet it's gonna be one or the other because I think these are oil drains and the oil drain is right there. Let's take a, ga let's take a guess if this is, if I'm right here. Nope. Nope. And there we go. There's only one way this will bolt. Otherwise it won't bolt. And what I'm gonna do, those are through pull through bolted, or they're not through bolted. So I'm gonna go ahead. And use these cap nuts. Run these in by hand in a crisscross pattern, and then once I get it to the point where I can't do it by hand anymore, I'm gonna to go to 244 inch pounds with the wrench. And I'll just start. Okay, so I'm gonna have to do a quick pivot here now. Originally I thought I bought the DIY Eco Box and I wasn't too far off. I bought the integrated DIY Eco Box. So it, from my understanding, the DIY Eco Box, it's literally kind of similar to what I do. Uh, what I did is you have to kind of source your own gear reduction, which is from the 241 or the 231. And then you get a small like inter intermediate jack shaft that adapts from the gear reduction to the 205. Um, the integrated uh, comes with a whole new output shaft from the 205 um, into this box. So this shaft that I installed when I originally rebuilt the 205 is actually going to get completely pulled out, replaced for this. And then what's gonna happen is, is I'm gonna slide this output gear onto here, and then this part of the shaft here will be sticking out right about there. And then that's when I'll mount this thing, this thing, and kind of build it in stages. So fortunately, I'm gonna have to go ahead, remove this whole assembly back out again. Uh, not what I wanted to do, Not definitely not what I was excited to hear, but I am getting an upgrade. This is probably, I don't even wanna put a percentage, but it is a, it's, it's much stronger than the one I originally thought I was going with. All right, let's do what I don't want to do. And we're going to take the output, the rear output housing off the case. I'm 
this. Well, that gasket got destroyed. All right, all the bearings are still in there. Sick. Cool. Put that off to the side. Let's go ahead and get this bearing out. Or, use a small flathead screwdriver. Oh, come on. Now you're just being ridiculous. Okay. There we go. That was a pain in the butt. Okay. Now. Bearing shift collar gear set. Okay, so what's going to happen is that now this becomes null and void because I have this. All right, I'm just going to grease up the shaft here. All you mature people can mock that if you wish. Make this a little bit easier. So now, should be able to put this back through. Oh, I'm a tool. Okay, so don't do what I did. I can't, I'm having a hard time getting this bearing off right now. It's just, the press fit is really good. But what you want to do is basically want this bearing off. You want to put the shaft in, give yourself enough space that the shaft is sticking out a little bit. And you want to seat the shift collar here. Then you can then go and start seating the bearing. So what I'm going to do here is get one side started with a snap ring. Oops. So I say most times I can do this by hand if it wants to cooperate. Today may not be that day. Okay. There we go. I'm just making sure that this, for the most part, is seated. I'm going to gently tap this back out, or back in. Clear some room here. Okay, 
fully seated there. All right, so what I was doing is I'm pushing on this, pushing it out this way without pushing completely out of the housing because I want to expose this race for the snap ring. Let's try that again. All right, so I'm gonna do some quick cleanup so I don't have a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of garbage and other stuff in my way. I'm gonna clean off my hands, reorganize the tools, and I'll be right back. All right, so it's been about a week. I had to film a couple other things before I finished this up, and I needed some confirmation on a few things. So uh, let's go ahead, let's finish this thing out. So we got the new shaft that we just put in completely sealed. I'm gonna take a, a gasket. I'm gonna do like I've not been doing. I'm gonna lightly skim it with some uh, flexible Permatex and put it on there. We will not be reusing the bearing retainer over this as confirmed by Northwest Fab and that these holes are left open for drainage. But if you look on the back of this housing right here, this is all machined to kind of keep everything together or keep all the fluid um, just in this area to lube up the bearing but also keep it from uh, spewing through the seal. All right, so now that I've got the gasket uh, maker, it's all setting up. I'm going to take my housing, make sure this is all nice and clean. I'm going to wipe this down because this is the mating face. I've lubed up the seal provided. And the second hard thing, got to take your shift fork and your uh, little sprocket here and load that up preemptively, just like that, okay? Now when we go to put this on, this little cutout here is for the shift fork, or for the shift rail on the 205. So, once again, seal is lubed. What I'm also gonna do is lube this shaft up a little bit more, because this collar is really, really tight. The tolerance is super, super tight. And this will make it, the install, just a little bit easier. Okay. Now I am told that there might be some hammering involved here, which I don't like the idea of, but hey, that's from the manufacturer, so let's take it. The trick here. Let's see if I'm playing with fire here. There we go. Okay. Oops. All right. Because these go through, these bolts go through into the case, I'm also going to seal them up. And I believe these go to 31 foot pounds. Let me just double check that. 31 foot pounds. And these are cap, cap head bolts. So from from Northwest, this uh, shift is uh, the shift uh, arm is locked on pretty good. 
So I loosened it up. Probably can go a little bit looser to be honest with you. And I'm just running it through. Just trying to loosen it up a little bit. But it does have movement, so I feel okay. All right. Cool. Okay. There's three holes drilled in this thing all the way through. There's one right here, one right here, and one on the top right here. So for now, I'm just going to thread, uh, Teflon thread these. But I'm going to put them, I'm going to put the vent on the top because that's where I think vents need to be. And then two of the fill, the drain plugs on the bottom. So looking at the instructions, looking at the instructions, we want the straight through, at least I feel like we do because we're not mounting to a GM uh, application. So I'm thinking with it being similar, I'm thinking it's going to be this one right here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to permatext, I'm going to permatext uh, the inner lip here all the way around, try to not to go too, too crazy. And this is the bolt that I'm going to, this is the bolt hole I'm going to line up the W on the other side with, and I'll show you that in a second. All right, so this is the straight through uh, for the W that we want to line up. Uh, let me goop this up, and uh, we'll get this going. There's a W. I want that to be lined up with the hole that I just had. What's nice is once you get it sit situated, you can rotate it. Just don't go too crazy. Because obviously you don't want to move all the RTV around. And I'm going to lightly blue Loctite these. If I find it, there it is. So I don't know if anybody else has this problem, but I always have a hard time keeping this stuff from drying out. Little trick I found that works really well, take a piece of plastic, put it over and just screw it right on. You might have to pop the top, but most of the time it's still very usable. All right. So now I got these started. Let's get them hand tight. And these are gonna be 32 foot pounds. in a star pattern. I'm just going to snug them up. Something I'm not going to cover in this video is the mounting studs for the back, only because I don't have my um, I don't have my pattern yet because I'm going to copy my uh, NP241, 231, sorry. And also I'm going to eventually clock this. So I got to kind of put it up and get an idea of um, the clocking. So I'm not even going to bother putting these in. I'm actually just going to put them all back find, and put them in a nice safe spot and save that for when I actually mount it. But basically, everything you need is here. That's it. Now, just getting this thing to shift into gear. It's a little tough because it's a little dry. And I just don't have the leverage to pop it loose. All right, now that the case is all done, everything seems to be working okay. Uh, the doubler seems to be working fine. We're gonna go ahead and mount up um, the shift cables and the shift assembly. 
Uh, this is a Northwest Fab kit, so this should go relatively easy. Um, it's made for this doubler, which is great. Uh, the only thing is I did buy it second hand, so we might run into a few things here and there. Something might already be assembled that would normally not come assembled, but I'm going to try to do my best to kind of talk you through it. Moving this thing is not, not fun. I'm going to tell you, it's already putting a nice, nice dent in my, my work table. But man, love it, love it. All right, so first it wants me to move these two 916 screws, this one and this one. So let's go ahead and do that. So I got these 916 one inch bolts. It does show lock washers on it. It doesn't say to go ahead and put it on, but we are going to do it anyway. And I'm just going to lube these up because I pulled them out of through bolted holes. I just want to thank Olsa Tools for sending me out these wipes. These things are amazing. They smell good. And they clean. They clean really well, and they they're not just for hands. They're good for tools. I actually cleaned some of my interior with this. So, yep, good stuff, and it smells real good. And if I remember, this was thirty. 30 foot pounds? Yeah, let's give it a shot. Spin this around yet again. This poor table. I'm doing a number on it. All right, so now we got to spin around. We're going to remove these top two bolts right here on this retainer. Okay, got the bolts out. So now we're going to take this little bracket here with this like all thread coupler. Got to make sure that's on the outside. And it's got this large hole right here that slides over the shift rail. It's going to mount just like that. Then we're going to replace it with these 1 inch 9 16 bolts right where we pulled the other ones out of. I'm just lubing them up because these are through bolted into the case and I don't want leaks. Once again, I think this is already set. Okay. All right, so here's what's next. We're going to take this bracket right here with the bend down. We're going to take this slider bolt just like this. It's got a shoulder on it. Put a nylon washer. Put that so that the bend is down this way. Put this facing down. I'm going to do another nylon washer and then a oops, then a 12 inch metal washer. And this is where it gets a little not a little tricky, but you just got to be aware. You got this little shift rail right here, and then this sits in, it should sit in just like this. I wonder if we got to tweak this a little bit. It's not perfect, but it's close. Let me take a look. All right, so I did test this out. It flexes a little bit and it actually goes in no problem. 
I'm just going to do a little light blue, little light blue Loctite because I don't want that falling out. And I'm going to thread it back in there. And then I'm going to snug it up. I did have to flex it just a hair to get it to uh, start. But there we go. And it still moves, no problem. All right, so on the other side, we're going to slide in this nylon washer. Mine's a little tight and it doesn't 100% line up, but I am going to try to massage it in there. And then we're going to use this uh, lock nut and the 5 16 bolt right here. So to get this in to um, fully seat, and comfortable. I had to take the tension off this, lift it up, and then put the nylon washer in first, then bolt this down. So, is there gonna be enough clearance? I mean, this is designed for this. So I took a half inch wrench, took a piece of tape, Put the bolt on it, kind of use it like a cup, and I was able to get it in there. So let's snug that up. Cool. All right, so we're going to take this really long threaded rod. It's the longest one they have. Start it on one side. Now thread two to the uh, the nuts on there. I think these are half inch or so. I forgot the exact thing. To the point where I believe there's about an inch sticking out on this side. Something like that. I don't know why I want to go a little bit further with this one. Right about there. Okay. There we go. Then we're going to take the other two um, coarse threaded half inch. Thread these on. It's kind of like lock, lock basically like jam nuts. Oops. This is a pre-owned kit that was never used, so I don't know exactly how it came from um, Northwest Fab, but we're going to go ahead and kind of make the best assumption possible. So, in case these cables do come kind of pre-assembled, they'll have these two spur washers and two jam nuts per cable. We're going to release those. We're going to take off one of the jam nuts or the spur washers there on each side. Then, I'm going to take this bracket right here. It's got three different holes. I've got a large, or I've got a two large right here, one small, one medium. And we're going to feed it in just like this. Oops. So these cables are going to go through here. And the tolerance is a little tight, so you, a little bit of soap and a little bit of soap water might do a little something. This time it worked right on. I'm going to get my spur washer on. And this is where it gets a little tricky that I found. Is that these washers barely fit over the collar to keep all the um, to keep the, all the foreign objects out of the cable. So peel this little grommet back, get the bolt or the nut started, and then pull the grommet forward, and then you can walk it right past, just like that. And then all you have to do is reset the grommet, just like that. So we'll do it again. On this side, this grommet's pulled all the way forward. So we want to get it as flat as possible. We throw the spur washer over, throw the nut, the jam nut, and it probably won't go over 
very easy. So we pull the grommet forward and there we go. Just like that. And then reset the grommet so it protects the cable. Just like that. All right, and there's different attachments depending on the different um, linkages you're going to use. So I need this one, and it looks like I need to put this one in the middle. This wishbone style one. Go ahead and thread that one all the way on. This is adjustable. Then there is a flat bar. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> Put that one on the farthest side, on the right side. We'll see if I'm right. All right, so I went ahead and ripped these off uh, the triple shifter because you know I'd, I'd literally be fighting it the whole time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take jam nut, thread it about an inch, inch and a half this way on the threader rod. Put this on just like that. Take another half inch. Nut, jam nut, and go just like that. All right, so I went ahead and got this loosely threaded on there. Um, I had to move it back just a little bit. I probably still could move it back a little bit more because what we're doing is making room for this DOM piece to sit between and use this as kind of like a, like a like a like a stop or like a you know a stopping point. And this plus the threaded rod gives the cables kind of room to work. So I got the DOM to kind of set the set that distance and this threaded rod here gets bolted in to the captured nut on the back here. You see how it's all it's all captured in there? So this is gonna require just a couple taps because the tolerance is really really tight. There we go. And what size is this? Okay, this is 9 sixteenths. Let's tighten it up. Huh. This bottomed out. Interesting. Did I do something wrong here? Alright, so this is kind of a uh, this is a weird one. Unless this bolt was replaced or something changed, it's too, it, it's bottoming out. Interesting. Okay. Well, I could always cut some threads off, and that's probably what I'm going to do. Hopefully it's not the wrong thing. I'm okay. I'm gonna run the die up and down just to kind of clean this up. I'll be right back. All right, cut the bolts down just a hair. I rethreaded it. Let's see if we. Uh, oops, didn't want to do that. Let's see if I get the uh, results I'm looking for. So now what I'm going to do is adjust back here to get this to sit perfectly flush with the hole that's right underneath it. Pretty close. I think a little bit more. That should do it. And same thing for the lower one. Okay, that's threaded in all the way. Let me lock nut that one. Ok, 
defense. Ooh. Used almost all the threads on that one. Okay. For the lower with the with the flat clevis here I'm dropping this uh, looks like 5 16 nut with this lock washer or lock nut in there okay I'll tighten that up in a minute all right and this is what I'm doing the instructions are a little bit different but I also don't have any more nylon washers, so I'm using metal washers on the outside, nylon washers on the inside, and then I've got to find, is it this? No way. Too, too short. I've got to find the bolt here. I'll be right back. All right, so I had to improvise. I found this, I think this is an inch and a half, um, three eighths bolt which fits pretty, pretty snugly in there. Once I uh, lock nut it in, we should be golden. Okay. All right, so this is the part where we're gonna start doing the eco box shifter. Now, I already took the arm off. I wanna get this bracket with my kit. And it basically bolts just like this. Based on the hardware, I think it's going to be these uh, button head or whatever the heck you want to call them screws. But I want to do a little bit of Loctite. Watch, this is probably going to come back to bite me in the butt. Okay. Okay. Note to self, don't lose that. That is 3 sixteenths. Oh, I'm shocked I don't have that size. All right, I'm going to put this back on. At least I think I am. Flat washer. Lock washer. And nut. Alright, so now I'm going to get the shaft put in there, but I don't want to forget my spur washer. I'm going to try the bottom hole. I think that is where I want to start. If this, look, if this will allow me to. Not a powder coating, it's just taking up a little bit of the Star washer, jam nut, I'm going to thread on this heim, I think I'm going to bottom it out, if I can. Alright, it's bottomed out, good. All right, so we got the last piece going on the doubler uh, case itself right here. We're going to attach the uh, the reduction box to the cable. Uh, and what we're going to do is I have a quarter 20 bolt uh, cap head or button head or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to feed it through. 
This I think is about three quarters of an inch. You want it really short. Um, and the only reason why I think this is what's gonna work is because the kit I bought was used. I don't have the exact bolt. So I'm gonna use what I have kicking around, which is this quarter 20 bolt. This really narrow um, nut. And I'm gonna blow blue Loctite this in. Tighten this down and we should be good to go. So that's gonna do it for our doubler build. Now I will pick up on this when I go to install it into the Jeep. I'm hoping to have that done this winter. However, there are some things I'm gonna to have to do to kind of get uh, the Jeep ready for this. I'm gonna to have to do a custom cross, cross member to kind of hold this up because this is another almost 200, maybe 300 pounds worth of metal. I'm also gonna to need to do uh, some console stuff to make sure I can fit uh, the shifter. And I'm probably gonna to have to dent the floor or custom floor make room for this but we'll cover all that in the next video if you have any questions comments concerns leave those down below always love to hear from you and just like always catch you on the next one